Talk to me about it. We went to Japan, we went to Australia, we went to all around Europe, England, and America and Canada. We rehearsed for seven weeks, which sounds a long time, but it's a very big band, 12-piece band, and none of the guys <clears throat> had played together for, um, well, some of them since my last tour, which was five years ago. a couple of weeks with the, with the rhythm section, a couple of weeks with the horns, and a couple of weeks with everybody, as well as lights and sound. So it worked out quite nicely as it By the time you actually are ready at the end of rehearsals, you're kind of, you're dying for a first gig, you know. I know the best shows that we felt were the best anyway were the Berlin shows because we'd never seen an audience react in the way they reacted. Fortunately, we videoed it, you know, because we were, we were doing the broadcast and we also recorded it. And it was such a good gig that we're now putting it out as a home video. Thank you! Say hello to everybody out there in television. Alice yeah. Clark? Yeah. Good. It's always the ones that you don't really think. When there's too much importance put on a show, sometimes it, it doesn't happen. It never lives up to the expectations. It's usually the ones that you didn't expect to be very good that are great. Heute Abend spielen wir alte Stücke and neue Stücke. Lots and lots of Stücke tonight. is basically we, we the attitude towards a live album is rather than put a complete show out and have it as a double album um, we thought we'd look at it differently and and as there are fortunately thank you god so many hits on the record we thought we'd treat it more like a greatest hits but live you know because as soon as you take a, a song into the studio uh, into a rehearsal room with a band straight away even before the album's out the album is a little redundant, you know, because you're suddenly playing things in a different way. God, I wish we'd done that, you know. For instance, a song like One More Night, which is one of the sort of the more tedious songs after you've played it a hundred times, you know, we, we do like... One more night, give me just one more night One more night, cause I can't wait forever Now, after about a hundred shows, we just, on a sound check, we started to do, um... One more night, just give me one more night Give me one more night, cause I can't wait forever I've been trying so long to let you know 
sort of change it around and suddenly the song becomes a totally different song and everybody changes the arrangement and, and for a while for about a month or so that was our most favorite song we just want to get the rest of them out of the way you know until we came to that song and everyone went, ah. So the live video, well, that's, that's the whole show and nothing but the show. Nothing taken out. Even the introductions are in German with subtitles. Das nächste Lied blickt zurück auf das Ende einer alten Beziehung. The song is heißt, Do You Remember? Sometimes when you can get, when you can really, you know, hear a pin drop, that's, um, that's the magical moment. I mean, for instance, when um, Eric Clapton and Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, that accident that happened, that night we played Washington and I dedicated always, because I had a couple of friends on that flight, you know, I, I dedicated always to them. And uh, you could, for the first time in America, you could hear, for us, you could hear a pin drop during that song, because everybody knew why we were doing it. I don't find it that hard to sort of, I don't relive it, but at the same time you, you know, you, yes, you try and tap on those emotions. It's like when you're writing a song, you know, you try and tap in on the way you, um, even though you, you're feeling maybe quite happy, if you're writing a song that is actually quite sad in the way, it, you know, the chord structure and things, you try and sort of tap into those, those emotions that you did have at one point and, uh, and use them.
Writing on the road is not really something that I'm very good at. I mean, if I was on my own and I could go back from the gig and have this little sort of set, this little studio set up in my room, then maybe I'd get more done. But then you start staying up late, and then you know, then you don't get up late and, until late, and then suddenly your time things turn around. I sometimes envy people like Prince, you know, who who lives and breathes music to the point where he only sleeps when he's tired. You know, Stevie Wonder only sleeps when he's tired. I kind of, I feel like I have to sleep and I have to sleep because the family are on the road and, you know, I have certain kind of responsibilities in the other direction. Well, it was no easy way to, to understand it. Is there so much of my life in hell? And so I can't find it. And the tears in the world will go. There's so much love you never know. She can reach you from there. Two Hearts, for instance. The horn players used to just do this waving thing because they're not playing. And 17,000 people were doing it. And it was quite amazing for us to watch that. We sort of almost stopped playing. <laughs> Choosing the songs is always a little bit of a, a problem because you're torn between not wanting to play certain songs because you're a little tired of them and the audience wanting to hear them and also not being able to play songs that you really would like to play because maybe there's too many slow songs. It can be a problem with um, when there's a very enthusiastic audience um, over enthusiastic ones, like in America, when if you're not singing, they're going, Woo! Yeah! yeah. Phil, you're great! You know, they do all that stuff <clears throat> while you're doing um, something very, very quiet. And that kind of shatters the mood for the band as well as distracts you, you know? Oh, the French audience, for instance, you know, amazingly loud and sort of vociferous, you know, and yet when you're playing the song, you could still hear a pin drop, so they they kind of um, got it together a bit more Europe, I think.
know, th those new versions of the songs are really why we put the live album together, because they've changed such a lot. In the Air Tonight has evolved such a lot since the, you know, in the last 10 years, and uh, even songs like um, uh, the new stuff, you know, Do You Remember and Another Day in Paradise, sounds a little bit different with the band. Well, after we've had a holiday, um, I'm going to be uh, probably taking till Christmas off. And then after Christmas, I hope there's a film which I've, I've read for and I'm sort of pretty much near the top of the list for, I think, I've been told. So um, if that comes together, then I'll be doing that in January. And then March will be a Genesis album will start, you know, and we'll just get into the studio and we'll just muck about for a few weeks and try and write because we don't come in with anything written, we just come in and improvise between the three of us. So sometimes it's very quick, sometimes it's painfully slow, but that will be an album, and then it will come out at the end of the year if everything goes according to the usual. I just want to do more films, you know. I want to do... I'd, like, I'd love to do another couple of films just to see if it's as much fun as Buster was. If it is, I'll do more, and if there isn't, then I won't, maybe won't do any more for a bit. Thank you. You've been lovely. Thank you very much. Wunderbar. Then I'm not so blue When you're close to me 
got a 